Hello, and welcome to Guitars for Bars. I'm your host, James. I thought it'd be a good idea to go ahead and introduce you folks to the amp that I usually use on most of these videos. It is a crate power block. Comes in a nice padded case. It's got some kind of dense foam ribbing going all the way around the bottom and sides. It has a pouch on top for the power cable and I also keep the speaker cable in there. It's got a handle with the double wrap thing on it. And it also has a shoulder strap with a little plastic thing for your shoulder. It's got a double zippered case. And it fits snugly in the case. It takes two hands to get it out. We've got some company for the rest of this video. Okay, so here it is. The crate power block. The front has an input and the gain, the high, mid, low, level, and the headphones jack. I love the simplicity of this. I use this on the videos. I use this at practice and for some gigs. It depends on where I'm playing. If it's a very small bar and I don't have a lot of room, then this is what's going to go with me. Uh, the simplicity of the front makes it real handy in a bar situation with low light. You've only got five knobs to deal with. And it's really quick and easy to dial in the tone that you want. It is solid state. Turn it around. <clears throat> Go over the back panel. Hold on a second. Prop it up. As you can see, also the casing is aluminum. It goes all the way around. So there's no plastic except for the front. I think the front's plastic. I don't know. It's probably metal. Yeah, I don't know. And then the back is metal. So it's good and solid, rugged, case, easy to handle, lightweight. I mean, I don't know that there's any amps out there any lighter other than the, the ones that are actually pedals that are amps. <coughs> okay, it also comes with a manual bridge switch. Let's see, where's that at? It's right here. A little switch means if it's in, it's mono. If it's out, it's stereo. So I like to have it in because I usually only use it with one speaker. But if I chose to, I've got two speakers. Okay, so the output jack on the back, the red one is mono. So that's the one I always use. The right and the left, they have their own speaker jack. So when you're using mono, you go into the, this one, the red one. If you're doing stereo, you go into these two. And you also got a CD input, so you can use it just as like a power amp for your CD player or uh, stuff in between sets or if you want to play along with something or uh, if you want to use a recording off a of CD to uh, like for an intro of a song or something. And then you got the level, which operates the CD input level. And you got a line out, so you can go direct to a PA or whatever. And then you've got the line in effects loop. You got this, uh, the right and left mono if you're bringing something in, like from a board. And uh, the effects loop. Send is on this side and this side's return. You get the power switch, which I never can find. It's, I wish it was on the front. And then the place where it plug, plugs in. And it's 150 watts. If you do it mono, it's four ohms minimum, 75 watt. It's also eight ohms minimum on the mono. Uh, four ohm minimum, 75 watts, four ohm minimum, 75 watts if you split it up into uh, stereo. 
So that's another reason I use the mono. And then I also use the high wattage PA speakers, just the speaker, not the no horns. Uh, that about covers it. Now we'll plug it in, give it a listen. Say bicycles. As a side note, I don't think you can get these new anymore. I got this, gosh, like almost 20 years ago at Guitar Center. They had them on sale for $50 each. I bought two of them. So I could play in stereo if I wanted through two different amps. So uh, if you like it and you want to find one, you know, good luck. Maybe you can find one on Reverb or something. But remember, I paid $50 for it. I mean, they're they're awesome. And for $50, I'm like, I'm buying two of these. I probably should have bought four because they're totally freaking awesome. You can use them kind of like a power amp, too. I've used it for a monitor for the drummer before. And they just, you know, plug or the line from the PA into the input. I guess you could use the, the line ends also. And... Uh, just, you know, ran it as a monitor. And then it was kind of cool because, you know, if you got the gain turned down, you know, it's not going to distort. And then you got the drummer has his own high, mid, and low to adjust the sound how he wants and level to get the volume he wants. So it really worked out good. And I'm probably going to be doing that again. The guitar I'm going to use in this demo is... The one I use most of the time at practice. I haven't taken it to any gigs yet except for one party. Uh, I'll probably use it for some because I like it. It is a Gary Bennett Design Torino. The S is for Samick. It's made by Samick. I'm sure some of you guys know who that is. They make guitars for a lot of other people. And I think it's in Indonesia. And here's the guitar. It's an SG style <clears throat> set neck. And I've had a couple Gibsons. And I actually like this one better. The neck is a little wider and a little thinner than a Gibson. It's got a Seymour Duncan Invader in the bridge position. And then the neck position, I've got a Seymour Duncan Distortion which is actually the bridge version of it. I like a hot pickup in the neck because I don't use it for rhythm, I use it for leads. And it's gotta compete with that Invader. So that combination is a pretty good combination. It's one of my favorites. My pedals for this video are just going to be distortion pedals and my tuner. The DS1, it's not my favorite pedal. I use it because right now I haven't found anything that works better for what I use it for, which is mostly the classic rock stuff. Uh, you can see there where I got my knob set. And then the metal zone, the level is like what? 1.30, o'clock. The uh, high is at about 11 the the low is closer to 12 o'clock and right now I've got both mids the high mid and the low mid set at about the same a lot of times I'll have the bass one farther over and then the distortion right now I've actually got it set kind of low because that thing actually has a heck of a lot of distortion to it. I know it's a, it's a much hated pedal in the YouTube world, but it's one of my favorites. I use it uh, almost all the time, at least anything that's got a metal sound to it. Although I've got another pedal that costs 10% of what these cost that I'll introduce you to in a future video. That pedal I was telling you about is the Dan Electro Fab Metal pedal. 
it has a plastic casing. That's the only thing bad about it. When I got it, it was about the same time that Guitar Center had the crates on sale because they were closing them out. That was the last, the last of them. These were brand new. These and all the other Dan Electro Fab pedals at the time were $15. Metal Zone, when I got that years before, was $150. This is $15. Sounds almost just like it. I'll put these pedals to test in a future video, but I just want to let you know, this is the one I use when I'm playing decent bars where I don't have to worry about somebody coming up and stepping on them or spilling beer or some crap like that on them. And if I got to play a bar where all they got is a bare floor or outside in the grass, then I use the Dan Electro. I bought two of these because they're only 15 bucks a piece. So I probably should have bought 20 of them. I then started selling them now because they're probably worth a fortune now, the way silly old pedals are. And then I also have this. I don't usually use it, but when I do need an overdrive, I use the DOD Overdrive Preamp 250. And this is a reissue. It's not one of the current ones. It's, it's a 10 or 15 years old. Uh, and I bought two of these too. And this, not so much because of the way they sound, but it's kind of got a sentimental value. My best friend in high school uh, passed away with leukemia. And when we used to jam together, because he's the one that got me into playing electric guitar, really. Uh, I had given up for years. I took lessons when I was a little kid on acoustic. It was a crappy guitar. and well, Anyway, he had one of these and he used it all the time with a Vox amp. And I think he had a Univox guitar. I'm going to find out. His brother still got the guitar, but his brother lives about 3,000 miles away. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to get to do a review of that or not. Anyway, I've got the crate turned on. And I've got everything at about 10 o'clock. The gain, the highs, the mids, the lows, and the level. It's all about 10 o'clock. And at that volume, you can hear I can talk over it. So that's definitely, you know, it's okay for bedroom practice, but that's not loud enough for being on stage. So I'm going to crank the gain up a little bit, crank the volume up, put the volume on, on 12 o'clock. That's better. Playing a clean part. That's plenty good. If you're playing in a bar, if you don't got a super loud drummer and he's not beating the hell out of the drums. Now that's what they're thinking at 10 o'clock. So I'm going to turn the highs up. It's probably going to get a little crispy. Too bright because it can 
you know, kind of hurt your ears. Okay, so let's go for a little bit more heavier. That's at about two o'clock on the gain. If you do that, you're not going to have any cleans. So what I usually do is I'll have the gain on somewhere around that 10, 11 o'clock position. And then I use either the Boss Distortion DS1. Something about that sound right there. Turn my eyes up a little bit. It's like it's compressed or something. I'm not a big fan of that. Now the metal zone. That's the basic sounds I get out of that. I tweak them a little bit here and there, uh, but that's pretty much it. So we'll be doing another video pretty soon on just the distortions. And I've got some other pedals to demonstrate that I use. And we're gonna take a closer look at the speaker that's in this cabinet because I'm going to pull it out and put it in a different cabinet. All right, thanks for watching. Please hit like and subscribe, and I'll see you again soon. Thanks.